Hello. This is Morning Joe's. I cannot, in all good uh, conscience, start the show the way I usually do, which is good morning. This is Morning Joe's. I am Joe Johnson. I've made a drastic and terrible miscalculation in my career choice. As I own PurplePTSD.com and uh, VikingsTerritory.com, <clears throat> I'm also the owner of the new uh, Purple Territory Radio Network, which is a group of uh, about 12 different Minnesota Vikings podcasts that you can see uh, on our YouTube channel or on, on either of our sites if you are some sort of uh, masochist and, and want to f- just feel like crap. Vikings fans, are, they're insane because you know the definition of insanity, don't you? Yeah, expecting yeah. a different result. Yeah. Yeah, I actually said that on WCCO uh, when I was on the Sports Tonight show. Might be why I, I'm not, I haven't been asked back. Uh, that's Joe Oberly, though. He is the editor for Purple PTSD and Vikings Territory and also writes for the Sports Post. Um... I ventured out a little bit this morning to get some energy drinks to try to alter my mood a little bit and spend some time on Reddit and on Twitter. And I, if, I mean, there's been t- a lot of times like this, so I, I'm not going to over exaggerate, but people are done. It feels like they are pissed. They are just dumbfounded I uh, there's people that I, I interact with regularly at the gas station because I'm one of those people that you know talks to cashiers because I'm super lonely uh, the first thing I say hey what I thought you said Kirk Cousins was the future and I was just like oh man Ugh. so yeah, you better pay to own that there brother you know I I, I, I put on Twitter or maybe it was Reddit now, I don't remember. But I said, I uh, just about half an hour ago, I said I was a huge proponent of the Kirk, Cous- Kirk Cousins thing. Um, you know, obviously play calling is an issue and the team really misses Pat Shermer. But this is bad. I'm not going to pretend that it isn't. This is nowhere near what anyone expected. You know, he's, he started out great. I don't know if, if all the hits... Or the turnovers just completely ruined his confidence. But I mean, there were there were times last night where uh, I can think of two, where uh, once uh, one was on the fourth and goal, and uh, another one um, where where Thielen was wide open for a touchdown. And we talked about this a few times in the last uh, couple weeks that uh, Cousins was attempting to limit mistakes based on the Saints game and the Bears game. And was maybe not, you know, going forward on every play like he might have earlier in the season, and instead was just checking down the ball a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is, but I actually, I straight up apologized. It was on Twitter, and I said, you know, this is bad. You know, I'm not gonna. It's bad. Um, can they turn it around next year? You know, does uh, yes, but there, there's gonna have to be some, some changes. Uh, don't you think? changes yeah yeah i don't know what they are but uh i'm not i'm not an advocate like uh uh most of you perhaps you and the the rest of the vikings fan base and they want everybody from zimron or spielman on down fired but uh um uh, well I, I, can i just say really quickly about that because that i'm getting a lot of messages like that i don't think that's going to happen with spielman and zimmer they're they're going to get another shot I also don't think that <clears throat> that would, you know, getting a new head coach completely resets everything. It changes the the fact that the, the Vikings had this three-year plan. They're, they're too heavily invested in this to make that change, I think. But they can make changes at coordinator positions, special teams coordinator, uh, offensive coordinator. But I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not happy with some of the decisions they've made, uh, Zimmer and Spielman personnel wise namely on the offensive line which i think has a lot to do with uh some of the stuff that's happened this year obviously 
But that's something that can be corrected next year if they identify it, which there's no reason at this point that they shouldn't. So I feel like if, if they did that, that would be like a complete reboot of the team. And, you know, you can't just assume you're going to get the same level of success, which is, ironically, which we'll talk about Prefer's issue. But back to you, yeah. I mean, you were saying <laughs> you were saying you didn't want to, uh, or you I weren't a proponent of that. I'm not in the same camp as you and everybody else that wants everybody fired. I mean, you know, my goodness. Did did you want everybody's pay doubled when they made it to the 13-3 and three last year? I mean, it just yeah. – or a few weeks ago when they were playing well. I mean, the, the fortunes changed so quickly in this league. Was last night a bad performance by Kirk Cousin? You betcha. That was bad. I mean, when he missed, when he threw to Carl Rudolph at fourth and one and double covered in the end zone with no chance of behind him, I said there had to be other people that were open, and there were. I mean, Thielen's man fell down. Take a look around. Uh, I just saw there's a there's a – uh, screen grab on uh, Twitter that I saw where you know the play when when Cousins turned around and threw it backwards to uh, uh, Dalvin Cook, if you recall that play, which is is jittery and, and uh, erratic yeah. and a he had a pi- yeah, a, pit, a pitch like that too. And, and that, no, it was it was it was he turned completely around his line his back to the line that was rushing him and threw him this little you might have not even seen that it was early on you're going what and then you can see in the screen grab that Seelan is twenty yards downfield with nobody within ten yards yeah of yeah wide open it's like dude how come you're not seeing this you know and it was so panicky and 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 strange and, and even even Dalvin Cook didn't know that thing what to do with it but I don't know there's there's something radically wrong with Kirk Cousins right now I don't know if it's you know uh, what we all feared coming in that he's very you know when the pressure gets to him he's uh, he, he struggles Skittish. under pressure because he he looked scared he looked um, so totally uncomfortable it, it's like you know I mean I, I go back to watching uh, Mitch Trubisky, who's his second year in the league, and he just sits back there and does whatever he wants. Or Mahomes like, makes mistakes and he bounces right back from it. It's like water it's, off his back, you know. It's it's there's something uh, something wrong with his brain right now. That's that's he or I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say because he he didn't always look like this. He looked a little bit like this throughout the rest of the season. He looked jumpy and skittish to a certain degree. But you know his inability to sense the pressure, and then, uh, uh, and then what you know maybe even sense it when it's not there, and just start freaking out is 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 really hurting this team right Do now. Do you think that's based on what I said about earlier in the season him getting hit a lot and nope. turning the ball turning the ball over, or is it just for, something with that? You know, you. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, you know, because that's a terrifying prospect. What? Pardon? That's a terrifying prospect. Yeah, I said, why now? Why would that? You know, I mean, he's been he's played behind rotten offensive lines in Washington for years, you know, and <clears throat> he's not ever had. I don't think he's ever missed any time due to injury. Yeah, you know? no, he hasn't. So um, if, he's, if he's gotten hit a little bit, you know, he, he certainly has has to have been hit in the past. He's an NFL quarterback, and and he hasn't been. It hasn't been that way. I mean, the line arguably is giving him more time than he's had all year these past couple games, it seems. I saw a stat on Twitter that I didn't verify, um, but it said that uh, Cousins is four, in, four wins, 24 losses against teams with winning records. Jeepers. And that's that's awful. because And I said it's a terrifying prospect because I don't know how to – I'm you know, I'm latching on to maybe if they fix the line, then, you know, X, Y, and Z – um, but for the record, again, I, I don't want everyone fired. I think Prefer should be fired for sure. Um, I don't think they'll fire DiFilippo, but I'm not a huge fan of his. I think I'm not sure they won't. I mean, right now, I I, uh, I uh, really I, yeah, I, not not during the season. He'll no no the yeah. Season. But I think at the end of the season, he's he may could be on number one on the hit parade because uh, that's where you gotta. Get your guy first to replace him if your thing is to do so. They got Stephen, Kevin Stefanski, who uh, at least what I've heard is that uh, Zimmer wanted him. Okay. And 
the higher ups talked them into hiring uh, uh, what's his face, uh, Filippo. Filippo, because you know after what happened in the you know, this could be speculation, but whatever what happened last year in the Philadelphia game, you know, so they hire you know the guy that uh, helped kick your tailbone and. And it's clear it's clear that he and Zimmer are not on the same page because he's called out his offensive scheme two weeks in a row. Not in a very vociferous way, but he has made comments where he'd like to run the ball more, he'd like to run the ball more. I mean, that's a comment to your offensive coordinator. Well, God dang, walk down the room and say, hey, run the damn ball more, you know. And if, and if it doesn't work out, then it's on me, you know. Then, But uh, so that, that to me right there seems – all is not good. Now, maybe that's two guys getting their crap together, but I mean, he's only got a two year contract. Everybody says he's going to get a head coaching job. I, 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 I will, see. please. It's not, I, I can't imagine it'll happen. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about play calling per se uh, in totality. I mean, there's things that bug me from time to time that I will say, oh, God, why'd you do this here or that? So I'm not going to make that call to say that he deserves to go, but I, I, what I do see is that they're not on the same page together. And if you don't have that with your head coach and offensive coordinator, that's going to affect, that's going to cause problems. You know, yeah. And the, I, that's a good point. And, and maybe you swayed me on that because my logic was that, you know, um, Zimmer seems loyal to the people that he works with. And the fact that, you know, uh, Prefer's been on, is still on the, the roster despite having, uh, what is it? Four different punters and four different kickers, and basically five years. Basically every season they they start with someone new. You know, the, the I wrote an article about Prefer uh, over the weekend, and a couple people didn't kind of took it out of context, but there was a quote that he had about uh, the punter and the holds and why they uh, had missed uh, those two field goals. And he said, well, apparently he never learned how to hold. <laughs> um, and uh, we found this out. Something just come to our attention. It's I, yeah. Never been taught to hold. And it <laughs> sounded like that. And, and a lot of people were like, <laughs> you know, whether or not he was just saying it that way. I mean, clearly, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you think that they aren't teaching him that? I'm like, of course they are. But the fact that you brought him in, he's not like a rookie out of college that you can mold. He's been on four different teams now. He, if he hasn't learned it by now, why make that change? I feel like with with Forbath, you know, it's 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 a combination of him not getting the best out of his players, and then when they do have someone who is decent to good, as in Forbath, who made the arguably the most clutch kick in the team's history. You have the hubris to say, well, we can just bring in a senior who had a bad year because he had the yips and Daniel Carlson because he has a stronger leg. He'll be able to hit those 50 yarders, plus he'll have a better point after uh, percentage. Like to make that assumption when clearly that's been a huge point of contention for Zimmer and he's he's had it, you know, um, with with kickers, uh, it's it's insanity. And you know the 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 point I was making is you got a guy like Dan Bailey who uh, before he got here was the second most accurate kicker in the history of the NFL. He isn't anymore. If he's struggling, you got like what is going on? Like every every time uh, to quote Tyler Hag who watched a game with me earlier this season, he goes, I don't know what it is, but every time a kicker puts on a purple jersey, they just automatically suck. And it, it's just gotten to the point that, you know, it's it's an untenable situation. It has to be. People are accusing me of being, like, because Cluey was on our podcast two years ago. I'm, like, super good friends with him, and I'm just trying to get him fired because I, I like Cluey. Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't... Well, speaking th- of your story, you didn't even respond last night in the chat when I said... After you were, you were mentioned your story, and I said, yeah, now uh, Prefer wants to take all the purple PTSD writers, put them on an island, and nuke it. You didn't even <laughs> I that. know, I know. Because um, I, I, I completely forgot that he had said that. And then yeah. uh, somebody on Reddit said the same thing, similar, and then I was like, oh, yeah, God, he did say that. Um, yeah, it's just it's just bad. You know, I, I, I do want to say, though, uh, that the game could have been different, and this isn't an excuse but that uh, blocked field goal was bullshit. 
Um, yeah, it was the wrong call, and I, 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 I mean, that, that dude launched himself I over the that. the line. How did they not get that? Would have been a fifteen yard first and goal. Flag, through the flag, how they picked it up, I'll never know because uh, he did it. He obviously did it, and you know he had a hand on two different people, and it, it's a penalty. I said, hey, that's illegal to do it. I, I typed that out, and all of a sudden there was, you know, then. Then they started uh, looking again and on, on TV and said, oh, my God, he can't do that. Well, yeah, it's obvious. They threw the flag. Go with it because it was you – know, how do these things get talked out of? I'd love to know what some of those discussions are like because if someone sees something, he's throwing the flag. Does someone come in and say, uh, no, uh, you, you know, black is white and Donald Trump can keep repeating the lies and they become truth? You know, I mean – Alternative that, facts. Yeah, it's it's really strange. They should have never picked up that flag. It was a penalty, and especially people don't, you know, players don't go up the middle block anymore because of that rule, because you can't do that, and you have to be a superior athlete to leap up high and not touch anybody, yeah. you know, of two lines. So, Like an Olympic uh, that, high jump. Black, pardon me? Like Olympic high jumpers couldn't just clear the line like that. So my point is any time that someone does go up the middle, you have to look at it carefully. And if you see that they did launch, it's flag. I, w- I would think you would err towards the uh, fact that they did launch themselves because it is such a rare athletic feat and it's just not done. I mean, you, you don't ever see people doing that anymore. Almost never. And they always, you know, replay. It's like that... That right there should be a re- replayable offense. Now that that would have given them 15 yards. That would put them right down there. And if they had momentum on their side then, and it was still a six nothing game, and they could have gone down and got that touchdown that they failed on in the previous drive, then you don't. You know, all bets are off. You know, then you don't have the panic cousins uh, getting the ball stripped and in, in a, a, a touchdown got out. You know, yeah. I mean, it was it was it would have completely changed the game. Now. Do the Vikings win? I don't know. Do they become a better team because of that play? No. They were beaten. They were all played in that game last night. They had a chance after, you know, their adjustments and, and momentum and, and what have you, and, and an amazing catch by Stephon Diggs, you know, to get them back in it. But they were still the beaten team last night. So I'm not going to kid myself and say, you know, hey, we, uh, we uh, the Vikings deserve to win and blah, 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 blah. They're, they did it. They could have won. They should have won, you know, with by virtue of what happened there in the fourth quarter. But yeah, you know, so it, it, it's it's very disheartening. It's very, you know, getting beat by the refs as well as yourself. And unfortunately, your quarterback is is tough enough to deal with. But uh, you know, yeah, that's I, I, I'm not. I, I was mad when it happened. I, I I was chirping about it on the chat. I said, well, what's what's going on here? And then and then you know, we just they go on with the game. What the hell, you know? Yeah. You can't let plays like that affect, you know, teams and games and seasons because this that's going to affect this season. It's it's touch or go where this team makes the playoffs now for sure. I liked how the Pereira goes. Well, it's a it's a it's a the refs can use their discretion. I'm like, well, <laughs> oh yeah, I see. <laughs> Are you kidding me? There were a lot of suspect calls and or non calls. Um, speaking of calls, did you like the them going forward on fourth down? Yes. Yep. And I'm not going to backtrack on that. I liked it both times. I I did not. I, are you talking about the one in the end zone or the other yeah. one where the yes. the um yeah the going uh fourth and goal? Most definitely. But I'm so sick and tired of of watching uh cousins stand like a statue. You know, on some get get your. I know if if you roll out, you're you're eliminating half the field, and you only have a certain place to do. But even if you only got one yard, I mean, sprint somebody he out. He could have he could have run that ball, and I think on third down. Yeah, perhaps. I don't know. It's it's it's. I I definitely. I didn't think they'd get back down there. You know, I've been watching the game with my daughter, and, and even she, who doesn't know that much about football, says, oh, you got to go here. Because I, I screamed at the TV. I've been watching the game. Well, that, that one guy who's on TV who's telling us to or booger whoever to, to kick the field goal here, he's wrong. They showed no offense for the, for three and a half quarters in the game. You know, what? what's to say they were, you know, were going to go right back down again and get another field goal? You don't know. So, I no, I, I – Totally I would love to know what their fourth down conversion rate is this season. Um, I think they mentioned that on TV last. Yeah, week. I'm gonna look it up real quick. 
No, it was I, – I, I don't – I had no problem with that. That's the play to do. And and as a result, I mean, it was a good play because the defense was playing so good. <clears throat> they they just – right then and there, they held them to a three and out after that, and they had to give the Vikings the ball back. So. And that's that's it too. I think Zimmer thought, you know, if we don't get it, we have them pinned back. Right. You know. And clearly, Zimmer doesn't trust his, his, his field goal team either, apparently. <laughs> that's what, more and more why I, I agree with you that uh, – Preacher is probably going to be gone at the end of the year. There's just there's just too many problems there uh, over time, and certainly over Zimmer's tenure that with with the special teams and the, the kicking game. So yeah, I, I know I'm I'm totally down. It was the right call. I agreed. I I was go, I was yelling at. It. I said go for it on the chat. I'm yelling at it in the house. You got to go. You got to go because you might not get back down there. <clears throat> if I was wearing like a Fitbit at that point in the game, it would have started on fire. <laughs> Um, it, apparently the Vikings are 8 for 16 <clears throat> on 4th down, so 50%. So you can, uh, yeah, I, I, um, you know, it's always easy to look back and say it wasn't successful and, you know, that field goal would have been nice. I, I was kind of thinking that when they were lining up the, the 47-yarder, like, oh, well, that would have been nice to have those other three points. But you're right. I mean, they, they hadn't done anything. It would have been a huge momentum swing. You know, you got to think that you have Kyle Rudolph. You got Diggs and Thielen. You have Dalvin Cook, Latavius Murray, and you have to make what a yard in four plays, yeah. and you, and you can't do it. And after the way the defense is playing, you you take the lead after what that defense has done for you. You tell them, yes, we're in this game too. We're helping you out. We're doing our side, and you fire them up. And maybe they shut down. You know, when when you you with a one point lead, you go back and give it to to the, the Hawks, and they maybe there pressing a little bit and 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 the uh, the Vikings defense can start you know dictating a little bit so no I was I was all for it I couldn't believe they didn't get it I couldn't believe <clears throat> it was such an impotent play you know he's throwing behind like you said behind Rudolph into double coverage yeah and <laughs> it, he had could... time but the pressure was there but it wasn't there and it goes back to what Luke Braun uh, said when he first came here, his his numbers in in the red zone uh, coming to pressure were pretty bad. So, yeah, yeah. it's very disappointing. Um, let's get into the tales of the tape because there's a few really juicy ta- takes or topics there. All right. All right, Tuesday's tales of the tape. Oh, they came so quickly from last night. There, I had to get up early in the morning and, and get away from this game after I wrote my story to, to say it. And uh, fever dreams woke me up early this morning, John, so I came, <laughs> up, I came up and uh, wrote this. But uh, Cook had 13 rushes for 55 yards, 4.2 per carry. And he caught five passes for 28 yards, and the Vikings only score. This is not the 20 carries that they were reportedly looking for out of him. Cook is healthy and can be a major factor in this offense. It's it's still confusing to me why he isn't. He looks really really good when he yes. has the ball. He face, looks you know he looks so uh, like pent up. Looks like guy, yeah, he looks like that guy from the first four games before he got injured last yes. year. I mean, we were our jaws were dropping. We were just giddy about the prospect of this guy on the team. Last you know, year. I feel like he he looks more powerful. You know, he's he's falling forward when he gets tackled um but it looks he I, I when i say pent up it just feels like at any given point he could break for a score there was one gigantic right. hole that he ran through where the the linebacker kind of tripped him up uh, mm-hmm. at, the, at the ankle where it would have just been him versus a uh, safety yeah uh, he had a block there. he'd have been gone he'd yep. been gone and Play. And he jumped up, and he knew it too. He was hitting the ball. He he saw what was in front of him. Yes, totally. You know, uh, people in the chat were saying, "Run some sweeps, run some run some screens." <laughs> Even the, the announcers on television said that the Vikings should run screens. You know, the thing is, is that this, as much as they were, the announcers, uh, as people in the live chat also pointed out, were really pro Seahawks. Talking about, well, you know, this isn't the Legion of Boom anymore, but they got some players and blah, blah, blah. Um, Which is just, true. Yes. Which is true. But, but, but there, there, there was room to do things, at least statistically. I mean, it, it, the, the crowd, the 12th man, I get it. They were hyped up for the, the entire game. There was never a lull. The Vikings never quieted the crowd. 
Um, I killed their drive. Vikings first drive, Joe, with that elf line. Never snapped the ball. Oh, you, you missed that. You weren't watching yeah. that. The first series, they, the Vikings, you know, started out very, you know, first plays that. Cook got a nice play, and they were second and four. and or It came that they were third and four, and uh, uh, elf line, I, thought, I still think he hasn't snapped the ball yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and... It just went it went past zero and it went past it went one two three and all of a sudden they blew the whistle and then he finally snaps it because he couldn't hear or whatever and Cousins was calling for it turns into third and nine it becomes uh, uh, a third and nine they blitz they sack Cousins they uh, punt and and you know it, they, they were actually moving they had already had a first down and they were you know to uh, on that series. So they were kind of moving the first series of the game. And to me, it could have set a tone, but all of a sudden, it's a huge penalty. And it, it was, you got to give it to the 12th man. But you figure, man, you got you got, you got got to know what you're doing on, on that because you know what you're coming into. You got, well, whatever. But yeah. Anyway, you were talking about the 12th man, and they were, they were yeah. tough. It's twice to play. No, you no know, and, and the, the, the game started with a lot of like third and longs. Um, but I, I wonder, and, and we've talked about this just getting back to Cook really quickly. You know, Zimmer, like you said, has has been in the media saying that he wants to run the ball more. I've latched on to this conspiracy theory that, you know, Zimmer's always got his headset in mute mode when the Vikings have the ball because he puts the microphone up. And I'm sure, I don't know, this, not to keep referencing the chat, but um, if you're listening to this and you haven't, I you should. I mean, should it's man. it's awesome. Stop, stop in. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a a bunch of writers there. We have a bunch of readers, and everyone. You know, there's no trolls. It's it's, and it's it's actually really good content. And um, somebody had mentioned, and and this came up uh, on Reddit as well, that you know Zimmer, maybe his downfall will be that. He, he's not really delegating. Maybe well, he is delegating, but he's not involved enough or involved at all in the offense. And you would think that with all the emphasis that he's put out in the media about running the ball, you know, every game it seems like this happens. The Vikings start. They they try to run. They have some success. I mean, 4.2 yards an attempt is good. I mean. There, uh, uh, Cook had a couple decent, you know, eight nine yard runs on first down, and then the, it just completely disappears, and it's it's like clockwork. And I don't know why Zimmer isn't getting him. And I'm not to say maybe he is. I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it. Like why isn't he telling DeFilippo like at halftime? All right, let's stick to it. You know, it's only a one score game. You know, I I, I don't know why that isn't happening. For every, for every person that is saying that, like you, you know, not just you, but other people that are saying, how can he's not more involved? There's there's another person who's saying he's too involved and he, he shouldn't be doing anything with the offense and and uh, the offense uh, the who's offense saying in the NFL, that? Uh, the offense now in the NFL is a pass happy place and you have to pass the ball to 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 do well and and yeah and Zimmer you're a thing of the past you're a, a dinosaur with your three three yards in a cloud of dust and run 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 top good defense you know so I I, I see plenty of that out there as well do you I, I, okay I I haven't and um I, but so you, I, I I have a problem with the fact that like you that he's he's not getting his way. You know, if, okay. if he wants yeah. this, like I said, walk down and tell him. And and if he fails, it's on me. You know, but uh, uh, so I, I think there's a disconnect there. But you know, as far as you know, it is uh, the, the league is 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 a passing league. Then throw the damn ball to to uh, to Cook then, because last yes. week he was the leading receiver, and this week he had. I think I just what did I just say? He had you know five two for twenty yeah. two for twenty eight and a touchdown. Yes. So, uh, but, I, I mean, wouldn't it be nice? I mean, if you identify in the game that Cousins is shaky, to slow things down and uh, hand the ball off a little bit, and then maybe do some play action where the apparently Kirk Cousins is really good, but I wouldn't know because they never do it. Yep. Uh, it's oh, it's, screen, it's it throw a screen last night that just failed miserably, and then I started chirping about you know. Oh, so we should screen, throw, run a screen, right? But that, you know, I'm, I was just being sarcastic. You got to do that stuff. You have, you know, especially when it's a tough rush against you. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree with that take. Super frustrating. 
Okay, take number tail of tape number two. The defense held Russell Wilson to seventy two yards, his lowest total of his career. Wow. Do I need to say that again? That's amazing. Wow. That should have been enough for victory. That fact, yeah. the fact that he got sixty one yards rushing ultimately did hurt them. But the defense played well. They shut this guy down. This guy has twenty nine uh touchdowns. Uh, passes coming into the game to to five interceptions. He's been playing great. He's the reason they're that they are in uh, they are virtually in the playoffs now because they you know he's the guy. But the, the Vikings defense shut him down. And yeah, they really did. I mean, there was not he, enough to win. It's amazing. The, the, he, he they really speaking of being shaky. I mean that that interception at the end of the first half was uh, probably the worst throw of his career. And they, I, I don't know if you read my, my, my post game, but I said here he was being Russell Wilson in the first half, then suddenly he turned into Cousins throwing this. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that would have been nice if it was a pick six. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you look at that, then you look at like what they did against Breeze, 125 yards, and you know, uh, to not to steal uh, the fourth take, but. You know, the, the Vikings are, are giving up about a, a touchdown and an extra point more per game than they were last season. But they, you can't really fault them because when the, they've played outside of the Rams, they, when they've played these quote-unquote good teams, uh, the Saints, the Seahawks, the Bears, they've given the offense every chance to win. And that's, you know, looking at Cousins coming into the season, you think, well, if he put up as many points, I remember uh, somebody in the management of the Vikings said, if he puts up as many points as he did last season, the Vikings would be 14 and two, you know, because I think they were averaging 27, 28 points in, in did Washington. Cousins put up that many points? Is that what he said? Well, he was. They were saying that you know, based on the offense that that he ran in Washington, he played, for, played for a different team. Who said that? I don't remember, but it was it was the main component of my my obsession with him i'm kidding I'm um but yeah that was they were basically saying like we you know we'll take the good with the bad which luke uh used to, luke brown used to quote because you know with him we 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 know with our defense that we'll xyz but that's just not happening no no and, and you know early on uh, the uh, a brain uh cramp uh, hurt the way the defense was playing and that came from the coach and now and now it seems to be a brain cramp, and the quarterback is not, you know, is hurting the offense because the defense is playing well. They've been the last three or four or five games. They've they've come on and they've gotten. I, I thought they played probably their best game of the season last night. I really I, did. I but, uh, it, for sure it was. Um, and you can't <clears throat> fault them for letting up. You know, most of those rushing six, yards came from that one run from from Russell Wilson. Right. Um, I. Six, I Something in the fourth quarter for crying out loud! And this is this is one of the better offenses in the league right now. They and held I, them down. I have to win. With that. Yeah, ask. seriously, it was like 1960s football. I wonder how much the you know you look at like a team like Jacksonville that has been frustrated because their defense felt like they had to win all these games or play perfectly. Because of Blake Bortles, <clears throat> now I'm comparing Cousins to Bortles. Oh my God, this is a nightmare. Um, but you have to think that the in the locker room, maybe people aren't buying into Cousins' leadership, or at some point they're going to get frustrated, especially on defense, because they are playing well, you know. And and how long can can that keep up? I don't know, but um, it, 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 it sucks. You know, I, I, it comes down well. The next two takes are on Cousins, so let, let's do this one first. Uh, Cousins' line last night was 20 of 33 for 208 yards, one touchdown pass, and an 89.0 rating. That rating's <sighs> too high. Yeah, and I, 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 I say this, and I shouldn't, but I'm going to say that's just not what we were hoping for from an 84 million dollar man. But there it is. No, you uh, know, it came up on TV a whole bunch last night. It comes up it everywhere. Comes, that's why I shouldn't say it because. It's such a freaking cliche. I'm sick of hearing it, but I said it. So it's it true, out. though. I mean, <laughs> you can leave the money out of it and just say that this is not what they expected. You know, I, I, um, I, I, I'm about I, money? what? It's guaranteed. Wow. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Everyone, I, people are saying, gotta restructure the contract. Like that's not gonna happen. Well, um, well, you anyways. know, I, I expected to hear from you because you said this when I've been depressed uh, lately. 
on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a three-year plan. I thought I would hear some of that from you, but I'm, I'm kind of re- glad that you're as <sighs> melancholy you know, I, as I am. I, I've been saying that for a long time. I, I felt that and believed that. Last night is the first time I'm saying, shit, it's a three-year plan. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was, um, oh, that was good. Here's, here's this. I, I saw this from PFT. I'm, go ahead. What? No, I was just laughing. That was oh. really funny. Uh, from from PFT, I found this thing: Vikings offensive ranks from last year to this year in total yards. They went from 11th last year to 17th this year. Uh, in points, 10th to 20th. First down, sixth to 21st. Third down conversion rate, they were third last year, and now they're the 22nd best in the league. Passer Jesus rating, they, they went from fourth with Case Keenum to 11th with Kirk Cousins. And he was much higher in the earlier season, but he is dropping like a, a rock. Uh, he still has a chance to be a top five MVP candidate, right? Right. Best prediction uh, ever. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Yards per pass, they were 11th last year, and now they're 22nd. Um, it's... You know, you can't. I'm not laying it all on Cousins' feet. I mean, the offensive line, boy, the offensive line wasn't great last year. But uh, maybe you've got to throw some of this on on D. Filippo. Maybe well, he's not I, doing the right things for his quarterback because last year that's what Pat Truman did. I they was did just exactly, going to ask you that. That's exactly what they did last year. They gave him uh, Case Keenum. They knew what he was capable of. And they somehow found a way to to get the most out of his strengths and and avoid his weaknesses. Not always, but you know, I remember, we remember remember that one game when Case Keenum threw two interceptions on two consecutive plays in a game the Vikings were wi- winning yeah. by several touchdowns. And yeah. uh, uh, so he was capable of that. Um, or the the, the Philly game. Enough, Ironically enough, I saw a, a story last night on Twitter or something where the Broncos are calling for Case to be more freewheeling and not so measured in what he's doing. So that seems. So I I wonder if, um, like I said, I was going to bring up the Shermer thing. Um, you know, you look at they they had uh, Keenum on sort of a tight leash. With you know saying you know, here's you, uh, the two options each play you know you have a dump off guy and then you, if this guy isn't open down the field they didn't really let him you know audible or do anything crazy like that then you uh, juxtapose that with the talks this season with about you know the volume of the offensive playbook Zimmer calling um, cousins at home and saying you know is this too complicated for you. And Cousins said no, but my point is that the Vikings have enough talent on offense to run a regular, uh, you would think, and based off the evidence from last year, a, a relatively simple offense, but they have playmakers who can make plays. You know, maybe Filippo is, is kind of buying into his own stock a little bit, and he thinks he's like Sean McVay 2.0, and that he's gonna he has to run all these Neo, you know, West Coast or like these just crazy is schemes. That McVay, is that the Sean McVay that got his ass handed to him on by TV the Bears on Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Is that the same. McVay? Okay, just check it. Um, so but ahead. you know, I just think that maybe that is one of the main problems. You know, you have Diggs and Thielen. You don't need to run any complex crap. Just let them do what they do. Yes, yes, and no. I, I. Uh, I would agree with that statement. You don't have to run complex stuff, but what happened to those two guys last night too? I mean, uh, now Diggs, yeah, they, they seem this league has certainly figured out Thielen to a certain degree. He doesn't doesn't uh, really get going until late in the game or garbage time these days when the Vikings offense gets going. I mean, he Diggs was is, open though in his defense a couple times. A couple times, yes. Uh, uh, and I'm not I'm not totally dumping on them, but if it, he's got to find a way to beat some some uh, double coverage, and you now he's not getting it all the time, but. <clears throat> I think uh, Diggs actually did a little bit, does a little bit better because uh, I think he's just a little bit quicker than than uh, Thielen and can get open when when they are when he's getting doubled sometimes. But you know, yeah. I if if that's who uh, Cousins is always looking for, and that's kind of what Zimmer said at one point, and they're not getting open, and I well, you know, I, 
that's that's a problem because it's got to it's got to go back to cousins because he's got to find the person that is and and I'm sorry I I don't even want to see the a number eleven on the screen anymore. They, I mean, just, we are on the such the same wavelength because I was I thought you were gonna laugh at me because I was just gonna say that's why it'd be nice to have a uh, consistent third receiver. A, you know, it, Michael Thomas. He didn't do anything wrong last. <clears throat> excuse me. He didn't do anything wrong last night. But I, I don't. I have so little confidence in him. You know, I, I, if I'm thinking that, you've got to figure that at some point. So is so is Cousins. But um, so I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe and it, Cousins has mentioned that. I mean, when yeah. he's when they said, "Why do you keep throwing a treadwell?" and he said, "Well, I just throw to the open guy." But yeah, that has to factor into it. Then you have. Um, what was the tight end's name that uh, dropped that pass? Conklin. That, Conklin. That, yeah. He uh, made up. He made up for it. Uh, he did. But he did. It's uh, just stuff like that, you know. It's, it's, it's just amazing to me. And I brought this up last week that this is a, t- a team that people were picking to go to the Super Bowl, myself included, com- saying who's got the better roster, the the Rams or the Vikings, stuff like that. And to, to for us to be and they're still the sixth seed, um, with with a fairly uh, easy schedule at least compared to who they're facing, but it's just it's like what's the point? And and we'll get to you, I wanted to get to your next point and then ask you that. Yeah. I just for, first before we do I, I, when we talk about the offense and the problems they're having, I mean. You always have to look at everything that goes into it, and you can't just take this game and say, "Okay, it's all Cousins' fault." I mean, you got a new quarterback, you got a new OC, you've got a, a, a struggling offensive line, you got a, a, an offensive line that lost its its head coach right before the season started. You got so these are all factors. I'm, they're all excuses, but they're also reasons. You know, um, do I hold out hope that some of these things can be mitigated for next year? You bolster the offense, strengthen the guard position on this offensive line. You maybe get, you know, a, a, a really great tackle. I mean, I, I liked, I still like how O'Neal's doing, and you know, Arif has was has been better. But anyway, you figure out what's going on with the offensive coordinator and head coach, and and you get on the same page with your quarterback, and you guys figure out what what are his strengths and how can we exploit them and use them. So. It, it's all part of it. It's all a piece of it. But uh, no, it, it, you know, I, I don't. I'm not ready to say all is gloom and doom. So anyway, uh, the Vikings are six six and one, and they have a half game lead on the final wild card spot over Carolina, Washington, and Philadelphia. Right now, the tie helps them, but lose another one and it will knock them out. You know, I was looking at the schedule of <clears throat> those three teams. Yeah, I got, you got that written down too. Yeah, the Vikings have the Vikings have to win these next two for sure. And give them, you know, and I think if they do, they got a chance to really be ticked off at the Bears who might come in, you know, with the division wrapped up because they already have it wrapped up. They'll come in and they maybe will be resting some players, so then you can win that one too. So uh, they do if they win out, they're in, you know. And it's, yeah. I, I, and I don't want them. To, I'm not sure I want them in the playoffs if they don't, because you know they're just going to get beat whatever happens of course and and there's a lot of people saying they don't deserve to be in the playoffs you know they haven't beaten teams with winning records um so yeah the panthers play the saints twice and the falcons so it's saints falcons saints that's rough saints and the saints should still have something to play for in that last week home field advantage yeah so they'll still be going and then you have the eagles uh that are playing the rams the texans and the redskins i didn't write down the redskins because obviously they're Gonna, uh, they, you know, they've had issues at quarterback. Um, so yeah, they they still control their own destiny, you know, and that's what's funny about being so down about them. But that the whole thing is, if they can't beat a team with a winning record, what's the point? You know, yeah, it, they just have to beat the team whoever they're playing. Damn it! <laughs> and they and they've been in these games, so they very well could. I know it. They if they just the, play halfway games. decent. They could have beaten the Rams, could have beaten the Saints. They should have beaten the Bears. They could have beaten this team last night. They could have beaten them. They, they were outplayed. But, you know, they, they they were outplayed yes and no because the Saints the Saints were lucky at, at the end to get away with a win, you know, because the Vikings were moving on them and, and you know, take the – uh, the refs have their – pull their t- head out of their tailpipe, and, and it might have been a completely different. So, yes – and that's the National Football League. Everybody's so close, and we—that's where I get uh, worried. Or I don't pay attention to. I can't beat any team with a winning record. Well, sure they can. 
they can and they just, they just haven't. They just haven't. Uh, yeah, and the Dolphins aren't a pushover team either. They, they're they're fighting right. for their playoff right. life. They had a uh, I forget what college football team that was when the the band ran on the field and that guy was everyone was getting knocked over. Cal. Joe Cal. Cap was. Joe Cap was the head coach of that team. Yeah, I was gonna say. I thought maybe UCLA. Um, they had a similar play against the Patriots, which was really really cool, and and so they're coming off that maybe an emotional high. Uh, but is that a, that's a home game, right? Yes. Joe, do you know who Joe Cap is? I you. I've heard of him. Um. You you do or you don't? Of course I do. Oh, okay, good, good, good. I um I watched a documentary so about him. He's the one that that won the uh, NFL championship the year before the Super Bowl started. Correct, and he's also uh, he was the he was the architect of that that play and a beat John Elway's team. Who the hell did John Elway play for in college? Oh, he played for Stanford. He played yeah. for Stanford. Yeah, beats, Cal beat Stanford. Anyway, sorry, just some of that arcane knowledge, but it's a great play. Every once in a while, you got to go watch that. But that's exactly what happened, it, and. Uh, and and I got I got some points out of uh, uh, Drake on that touchdown as a result, which was kind of cool. <laughs> so you helpful. you won then, right? Obviously, I did. I did at the last shot. You know, and I had the battle. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a lot of credibility anyway, but I set up the our ten t- person league, all writers from Purple PTSD and Vikings territory, uh, and had eight teams make the playoffs because I thought. A, it would be more fun and more engaging, and B, that there's no way I wouldn't make it, and uh, there was a logjam of five <laughs> and eight teams, and I don't know what the determining factor was, but I didn't make it. <laughs> Ugh, I suck. Oh God. Well, speaking of something like that, I mean, uh, how did you? Know, what? I think I picked up a couple more points on it prediction-wise last night, because I had, I had the, I had the, the Seahawks. Nailed. I had twenty. I had twenty three twenty one. I had missed the Vikings by uh, sixteen points, but I had the Seahawks right on. So I'm not. Can't remember. I think you were a little high. I was twenty eight twenty four. So 28. I was off by eight, what eighteen nineteen for the Vikings, and then seven. So twenty five nine. So you picked up nine points. Um, I don't. I gotta ask Luke to double check what the uh, season spread is, but I think it was around 30 to 40 points. So yeah. it's uh, it's over, Mr. Munson, to quote <laughs> King, Kingpin. Uh, for the over-unders, though, uh, we had uh, over-under Cousins, 0.5 interceptions. Over-under Vikings defense, 22.5 points allowed. And over-under Dalvin Cook, 70.5 yards. <laughs> And we nobody got the right answer. So really on our Twitter, uh, yeah. Um, I, I was I'm such a homer with this thing, and I picked over for for uh, uh, Cook, and he was heading in that direction. But then uh, John D. Filippo, fire the man. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I took the I took the over on um, Cousins interceptions because I did. You know, I picked, obviously put the believe didn't the get that. I couldn't believe it. Either, 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 yeah, either did I. Um, God, what a, what a complete and utter nightmare. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I hate to, I mean, it's kind of my MO to be an, uh, overly emotional and, and get down on the team and then get right back on the saddle. Uh, typically, before uh, all this... Uh, writing and websites that started. I, I wouldn't even watch or listen to any sports stuff till Wednesday, and then I would kind of get back into it. But you know, you got the Dolphins coming up. It just, it's just, yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I, it's, 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 it's bad. Hey, they're they're in charge of their own destiny. What, what do you want? You want them? To, I mean, we all. I don't care. We can say this. We're blue in the face that, oh, man, they don't deserve it. They shouldn't go to the playoffs. I don't want that. I want an extra week of Vikings football. I want an extra, you know, because uh, it's one thing I will agree with Kurt. Get in and you never know what can happen. You know, maybe they, they start figuring something out. Maybe, you know, uh, you just got to get in the dance and see what you can do. You know, you, you beat the Bears in the last week of the season and put some doubt in their head and then head down to Sh- Soldier Field and uh, play them again and uh, – you know, move on to the second round. I mean, 
They showed the play last night on TV when Blair Walsh missed the 27-yard field goal wide left. That should have been the Vikings moving to the next round. That stuff happens. Just get in the dance. And so, I don't. You know, part of me wanted to say, you know, lose the next three and get a better draft choice, but yeah. Well, and and from a business perspective, a lot of our clients uh, give us bonuses, just like the team. If if the Vikings make the playoffs, just because the traffic goes up, or normally it would. Who knows what'll happen this season? Uh, uh, and I typically on Tuesdays do a fortunately, unfortunately. So if the Vikings win, it's fortunately, unfortunately. If they lose, it's unfortunately, fortunately. And I will say that I've been very encouraged, uh, especially this week, with the play of Holton Hill. And uh, Harris, I think they are both uh, future, big future cogs, obviously, of this defense. I would argue that Harris is the most improved, one of the most improved players in the NFL. And you know, going back to the year three year plan to to maybe talk myself off the ledge a little bit. You know, you have those guys; they're young. The defense is still relatively young. You know, they, they got some decisions to make. I, I do wish they would have picked up Michael Kendricks after he was cut from the Browns. I think that would have been huge, even though he's probably going to prison after the season. But it would have helped this season, as we saw last night. But, the you know, you got to be encouraged on the defense. That's really, I mean, when it comes to what people are saying about blowing up the team completely, uh, you know, Zimmer is good at what he does in that regard. They have to make some changes on offense. They have to get some uh, offensive linemen in. Nick Easton should be back next year, which would be a huge help, too. And so, yeah, I mean, I just got to think positive. Otherwise, um, here's a positive note for you. You just brought it up, you know, in fact, talking about Holton Hill. And they also have uh, uh, Hughes waiting in the wings for next yeah. year. And you yeah. know what this means? You know what this means? That those if those guys playing so that the Vikings will not draft. I I was going to say that they'll, they'll, they'll draft round. a corner in the first round. Yeah. Um, they won't. You can, you can have, never have enough. Exactly. Um. Yeah. But we'll put that to the test next year. If if he drafts one in the first round, it's like okay, that's it. That's it. I don't care that he was he was right. He was proved right this year, and he is. But he'll get these players back. And uh, they 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 are strong in the secondary. Now they got it. They need another linebacker, not in the first round, but they need uh, they need offensive line. Yeah. Draft a couple, a, a tackle and a guard, and like you said, Easton coming back that will be huge. Suddenly, this is a this is a young and and strong and mobile uh, uh, offensive line that might just make. Uh, Cousins lose the jitters in the, in, in the happy feet. So we'll it is see. so. It is amazing because you read all the stuff about how he prepares. I mean, he does the brain testing. He's on the the Tom Brady diet. It's it's it, the guy is so committed that. Or should he be committed? <laughs> um, I'm just glad that I. I uh, there's a website where you can hire famous people to read copy called Cameo. And uh, Kirk Cousins is on there, as is Brett Favre. I found out about it because apparently Brett Favre got duped into yep, reading yep. some pretty racist stuff, which is awful. Um, I don't know if he's – it appears that he's still uh, active on the site. Uh, but I was, I've was i been debating with people internally, should we do Favre or should we do uh, Cousins for to talk about the show, to talk – or the show, yeah, and the sites and everything. I think it would be like a cool intro <clears throat> for for us. And everyone was saying cousins, and now I'm kind of leaning towards Favre, to be honest. Especially if I can get him to talk a little bit of shit about the Packers. That'd be nice. Uh, Pieces are in place. Pieces are in place. (laughs) Um. So yeah, that. uh, I want to. I do want to thank everyone that's that's listened. I'm hoping that the the sounds of me doing a Darth Vader impression have been fixed apparently my microphone was like on 150 percent sensitivity uh not to mention that i nervously pace while i'm on the air too so the audio should be a lot better but uh you know i know that it's it's asking a lot to get people to find a podcast download it put it on their device or stream it at work or whatever so i do want to thank everybody for their support both on this show and purple journal the purple journal podcast which is on hiatus right now uh, because it, it does mean a lot to us, and you know, it's it's what I found from the live chat, from the community, from our forums, or internal discussions with our writers, that it is just 
misery does love company and i mean that in a genuine way as in you know we're like the one of the great parts about this is the people that you get to meet and the interactions that you get and the stories that you hear uh, from people and how emotionally tied they are to the team and and so we try to project that on the show and and i uh, just wanted to thank everyone for for their support because yeah the season's been a little bit rough but we still have people tuning in to hear us wow what bitch a, what about a, it a, Come for, come for the great sound and stay for the misery. Who doesn't want? <laughs> I always, uh, as I am a salesman, uh, as my trade and pity is always what I'm looking for. <laughs> so yeah, this has been the purple, or not the purple journal podcast, the Morning Joe's show. We will be back on Friday. I do want to shout out the About the Labor show slash podcast. They will be recording live Thursday night uh, on YouTube Live and Facebook Live, so I uh, keep an eye out for the links to that. I don't know what time it'll be yet. I think 8. Actually, I do. It's 8 Central. Um, I'm usually at the liquor store till 10 <clears throat> Excuse me on Thursdays, but I, uh, as some of you may have seen, I posted a, a uh, YouTube Live video of my new background. That has like all my Vikings tchotchkes, and uh, so I'm hoping to make the show, uh, but if I don't, I'll post some links to it. Otherwise, we'll uh, be back on Friday, and uh, keep an eye out on Purple PTSD Vikings territory for all the articles, as well as uh, the sports posts for uh, Joe's stuff. Thanks for listening, and uh, skull, I guess.